words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Something has not been right at my house during these last two weeks. Ever since my daughter, Catherine, came home from Charlottesville for Mother's Day and went back to Charlottesville, taking with her our standard poodle, Millie. It was love that drove us to that decision. Catherine is living alone in her apartment in Charlottesville this summer. And during this sheltering at home time, living alone can be a lonely place. Millie is a comfort and a companion to Catherine. And for my husband Mark and I, this means no more high alert barking at the Amazon delivery man. No more muting our microphone and video during Zoom calls as Millie makes her appearance. No more black dogs sprawled across our white sofa while we sit there watching Netflix. No more dog smells, the food, the breath, the dirty dog. No more evening walks with Millie pulling us along the way. I think it's hardest on Mark. He misses that evening welcome home dog greeting of unconditional love. My way from my computer and honey, I'm still working, doesn't quite cut it. Without Millie in our house, our house is not quite so loud, quite so smelly, so messy, so cozy, so loving. kind of how I feel today without you sitting in the pews in this house, our sanctuary here in Montfort. Church is about sitting shoulder to shoulder and at times it is loud and messy and even smelly with incense, Easter lilies, silk colors and songs. How do we sing, hallelujah, sing to Jesus without raising our voices? Church is where we let our guards down, like letting the black dog sleep on the white couch. At church, vulnerability and shelter sit together side by side. Death and new life are at the center of our story. Peace rises from the paradoxes. Find comfort and strength in coming together as one with all our various differences. And like Millie's welcome home greeting, we are invited to receive God's unconditional love for us. And yet here we are, out of care for one another, we are not sitting shoulder to shoulder in this sanctuary on this Sunday. Instead, we are together in different places, in different spaces, via YouTube, on our phones, and on our computers. It is love that drives us to this decision, to this foreign and uncomfortable place. It is our nature to want to protect and to keep those we love from created by God to care and love for one another, and Jesus, the rabbi, the teacher, the Christ, reminds us over and over again of that truth. In that rather confusing passage from John that I just read, love is what Jesus is talking about. He is praying to God to care for, to keep, and to protect his disciples. At the end of this prayer, Jesus asks, Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The word protect is the same word Jesus used when he talks about watching over, keeping, taking care of his disciples. Jesus knows he will be leaving them soon. He will be leaving this world. So he is praying to God those he has come to love so dearly. God, 
God, watch over them, keep them, care for them, attend to them very carefully. God is driving this prayer. In it we hear the echoes of the good shepherd who has come to keep, to care for his sheep while he was in the world. In this farewell prayer, Jesus wants to make sure that those he loves will know that they are being cared for in his absence. They are no longer standing shoulder to shoulder on this earth. As Jesus and the Holy Father are one, Jesus is praying that with God's care, his followers will be able to put aside divisions, to come together in love as one body, one church. Many of us now are growing impatient, frustrated, tearful and painfully longing for the day we can all come back together and worship in this sanctuary and in all of our sanctuaries. Some of us are ready, believing that this has gone on too long, and some of us are still hesitant, cautious as reopening and next steps are beginning. In the middle of all this stands the church, deeply both a place of risk and vulnerability and a place of comfort and security. Where do we turn for answers in the crisis? It's so best to turn where we have turned before, to the gospel and to prayer. And there we will see that the church, the body of Christ, is not like any other or business or service industry. While we and we care for each other like in our favorite cafe or even at our hairdresser. We have no economic imperative or self-satisfying desire to get back to business as usual. Our imperative, our urgency is a different one. It is love that drives our decisions. Finding love that looks beyond ourselves, looks our own personal desires, our own pleasures, our own preferences. While our hearts may be aching for what we are missing, God's love and care holds us, God sustains us in ways that we cannot imagine. Even in our loneliness, we have not been left alone in our longing and loss. Some days it takes me more time see the signs of the sustaining presence. It takes prayer, turning to God in gratitude, turning to God with my deep felt pleas. This weekly turning used to be so much easier. It began with pointing my car towards Montpelier, driving to this sanctuary every Sunday. Now turning looks a little different. It takes a little bit more thought and creativity on my part. It takes letting go a bit so that I am unbound by the familiar way. To turn in love, I have to let my guard down a bit in the outside world. Let my guard down when I'm outside of these church walls. Trusting in God's how it was for those under God's care and keeping who have come before us, those who, others who have found themselves in the wilderness, in exile, fearing a separation from God. In tough times, it is easy to fall prey to the one in 1 Peter that we're warned about, the one Peter describes with the words of anxiety. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith. Do you cautions? For you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. In this time and in the time to Love drive our decisions and cast all your anxieties on Christ because Christ cares for you. In those 
those closing words of 1 Peter. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore 